Have you ever wondered why if you leave a chocolate bar in the car, why does chocolate turn white? I'll tell you all about it. Melted and discolored chocolate from a candy bar or another piece of chocolate that has been left in a car, it almost looks like it has mold, but it's not mold, it's called chocolate bloom. And for the most part, it's okay to eat, but it just doesn't look very appetizing. I'm confectionery journalist Carla Scully here at Anthony Thomas Candy Company in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm getting ready to find out why does chocolate turn white. I used to work in a candy store and I'd always tell people not to leave their chocolates in the car even on a mildly warm day or in the sun. As the sun penetrates through the glass, your vehicle gets warmer than it is outside. On a hot sunny day, that melting happens within minutes. Think ice cream and how when you refreeze ice cream, it's just not the same. Many people don't realize how easily good chocolate can be ruined. The visual appeal of chocolate confections are not only important to the customers, but also to the manufacturer. Because if the chocolate doesn't look good enough to eat, then no, will, no one will want to buy it either. So why does chocolate turn white? or become bloomed as it's known in the candy industry? It is usually because of fat bloom or sugar bloom and neither are appealing to look at or eat. So we're here to answer the question about why does chocolate turn white? To understand why chocolate turns white, we must first talk about fat bloom. For chocolate, fat bloom occurs when the cocoa butter comes to the surface of the chocolate piece. Cocoa, cocoa butter is one of the three components of chocolate. Cocoa butter here, the other part being cocoa powder, and together forming chocolate liquor, which is 100% ground up cocoa bean. Continuing along with the question of why does chocolate turn white, I want to talk about why uh, tempering is such a critical process in preventing chocolate from turning white. Tempering is the process from which stable crystals are selected for the cocoa butter phase of the chocolate. The triglycerides of the cocoa butter are treated in a way to select for stable crystals that will then set the chocolate into a, a stable configuration, resulting in a good look for the chocolate. When tempering chocolate, you first heat the chocolate mass up to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That will eliminate any residual crystals of cocoa butter. On an industrial scale, that chocolate will then be dropped down to about 83 degrees Fahrenheit to induce crystallization within the cocoa butter. That chocolate will then be subsequently warmed back up to delay the setting of the chocolate and also to remelt out any of the less stable forms of cocoa butter crystal. After that reheat process, what is left are crystals from which the cocoa butter can then solidify into a stable form. In tempering, the triglyceride uh, is induced to crystallize, and in certain crystallizations, it packs together into a stable overall crystal structure. There are three factors that we have to take into consideration during tempering, and that is temperature, time, and agitation. Temperature has to be controlled in order to induce crystallization, but also melt out any unstable crystal. Time, you need the time in the cooled state to induce that crystallization as well as time in that elevated state to melt out any of the unstable crystals, leaving the chocolate mass with triglyceride seed from which that nicely packed final crystallization of cocoa butter can take place. Agitation is important to mix those seeding crystals throughout the chocolate mass. 
and letting all the chocolate undergo the same crystallization structure. In the old days, the tempering process was carried out using a marble slab. A portion of the chocolate will be pulled out, smeared across that marble slab, to cool it down. Once those, that cocoa butter had crystallized, that mass was scraped up and put back into a liquid mass, turned around uh, to induce the crystallization for the whole mass. That's how, cocoa, that's how the tempering process was enacted in the old days. Other methods can include taking well-tempered chocolate, weighting it to a fine powder, and then adding it to chocolate that has been cooled down to somewhere around 90 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. That tempered chocolate being added to that chocolate mass will, in effect, see the proper crystals for the tempering of that chocolate mass. So when tempering chocolate, we have a chocolate supply, and that's coming in warm, hot, about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. It comes into the auto-tempering system, which is a column, a squatter jacket. Initially, that chocolate mass is cooled down to induce the fat, fat crystallization of the cocoa butter. It's then heated back up to delay or postpone the full crystallization of the, of the cocoa butter and also to remelt or melt out the less stable crystals because we are selecting for the more stable crystals of cocoa butter in the tempering process. Once it's gone through that reheat step, it's then sent to the line to be molded. With the defect of fat bloom on chocolate, there is a phenomenon referred to sugar bloom. Versus a standard chocolate, sugar bloom appears as fine sugar crystals on the outside of the chocolate piece. What has happened is that water has condensed on what is likely a chilled surface, pulling the sugar out of the chocolate. When that water evaporates, it leaves behind the fine crystalline forms of the sugar on the surface. Fat bloom and chocolate sometimes be the result of poorly tempered chocolate. A chocolate that is properly tempered will have a nice high gloss. When it's broken, it will snap. When it's placed in the mouth, the chocolate will melt quickly and exhibit what we expect for sweetness and creamy texture. Tempering is essential when molding chocolate because a well-tempered chocolate will pull away from the mold and enable demolding of the chocolate piece. A poorly tempered chocolate will not exhibit the gloss and may look gray or matted. Sometimes the chocolate will also not snap and be soft. It can melt unevenly in the mouth and can display abnormal tastes. Poorly tempered chocolate will create issues in production and not allow for the candy piece to be properly demolded. Continuing with the question of why does chocolate turn white, in addition to temperature abuse, as in a hot car, Improper storage conditions, again, getting the chocolate too hot, can lead to bloom. Improper cooling of the liquid chocolate or improper tempering of the liquid chocolate can also lead to bloom in the development of the white film. The inclusion of materials that have nut oils or other low melt oils can turn the chocolate white as well. And finally, we have abrasions or finger or touching by fingertips that can uh, mar the surface and create areas where there is bloom. The finished product chocolate comes in several varieties. These varieties are controlled by a standard of identity as identified by the US federal government. Dark chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate has the highest amount of cocoa solids, ground up cocoa bean, also known as chocolate liquor. It is at least 35% chocolate liquor and no more than 12% dairy solids. Milk chocolate 
is at least 10% cocoa liquor, chocolate liquor, with at least 12% uh, dairy solids in the formula. White chocolate actually has no ground up cocoa bean or chocolate liquor within its formulation. Instead, cocoa butter, somewhere around 20%, is mixed with sugar and milk to create that product. Of these three types of chocolate, dark chocolate is the quickest to exhibit bloom due to its higher cocoa content and its darker color. As a consumer of chocolate, how can you make sure your chocolate doesn't bloom and stays in its proper temper? Proper storage. Chocolate is sensitive to temperatures and moisture and should be kept in a dry, cool place out of the sun and in rooms cooler than 72 degrees Fahrenheit. About 55 to 65 is ideal. Here are some do's and don'ts. If you're going to refrigerate chocolate or put it in the freezer, do take precautions to prevent condensation on the surface, such as tightly wrapping the chocolate in saran wrap then return the chocolate to room temperature before unwrapping. Don't store chocolate near warm things like the furnace, radiator, stove, or window. Don't store chocolate near strong odors, not because of blooming, but because chocolate can pick up the odors of strong scents. Don't store your chocolate in the car. Your car is always warmer than outside, and the glass window brings sunlight through that amplifies the temperature. Even in the winter months, if your chocolate freezes, it could get condensation and the moisture will ruin the chocolate. That's a wrap on Why Does Chocolate Turn White?